we need to do is fucking destroy the system. <laughs> and if we can't, then, you know, so much the worse for us. Uh, let's enjoy trying. What's up guys, this is The Architect Tonic, and the following is an interview I conducted with an anarchist who just returned from the RNC and the DNC conventions where he protested and was arrested at both locations. What is anarchy? Well, I don't, I mean, it's, it's a really interesting question, and I think there's kind of this misconception that there's one way of defining it, when probably it's much better to conceive of multiple anarchisms that you know, are cut to fit the specific individuals and social groups that are in revolt against whatever kinds of institutions or relationships they find to be dominating and oppressive and thwarting them from you know, pursuing their autonomy. What do you think about the role of violence in uh, a certain version of anarchy and uh, do you consider yourself to be a pacifist? First of all, I think it's really important as anarchists that we develop a really critical orientation toward systemic notions of violence. Um, if we're taking for granted what the government says or what the mass media tells us or the law tells us is violent, then already I think we're, you know, uh, we're losing some key ground, right? So you would agree that love does not imply pacifism? <laughs> sure, yeah. It's interesting that our notion of violence tends to be mediated through the media. Um, whenever there's violence um, from the bottom up, it tends to be um, brought to our attention to a, de a great degree. But whenever there's a degree of violence from the top down, um, that tends to be censored or, or even rationalized or legitimized. Um, and it's told to us to be necessary. Um, so what do you think about the role of violence in regards to that, in regards to class? Yeah, I mean, as a class issue, I think it's you know, often an important aspect of survival. Um, you know, people are fighting for their lives and fighting for their right to continue to exist and you know, have use the basic necessities of life, which even if in some cases, you know, that involves some things that I don't think ultimately are very important. You know, for instance, the way in which certain people in marginalized black ghettos in America are you know, really into capitalist bling bling. Um, you know, I mean, you can understand how and why that happens, and I many people are like forcing their way in to take that when you know, they've been denied privileged access to it the way that a lot of you know whites, um, a lot of middle and upper class folks, um, a lot of males, you know, are much more able because of social forces to pursue those things. Then, you know, not only do I not oppose it, but I think that there are ways in which it kind of illustrates that. This debate about violence is ignorant and overblown. I mean, it under you know it just completely ignores the role of you know allies of anarchists that are fighting oppression, not just at protests, you know, and not just like in a middle class or upper class malaise, but are fighting it you know in their daily lives consistently um, and are being specifically targeted you know because of their skin color, um, because of their physical appearance and are needing to protect and defend themselves. Um, so, you know, it, there is a very, like, important class component to that issue of violence. What do you see as being uh, necessary to study as an anarchist? I mean, I think it's just so much more desirable to develop a rapport with your immediate circumstances. I mean, the more direct you can have relationships and the greater contact you can establish, the more enjoyable, the more that comes out of that, you know, the more that you actually get immediate sorts of feedback and critique. Um, and, and there's a lot that can be gained from books and you know, reading scenes and getting online and having conversations. But, you know, the more that I can learn to read my immediate circumstances, the better that I can, you know, adjust my life and open that up, you know, to like forms of revolutionary practice and find my friends and allies, you know, and that's what I think anarchists should want to be doing, you know. Um, you know, there's a point at which maybe I feel like reading and doing philosophy can become kind of indulgent and can, can take us away, you know, from the kinds of relationships that might help free us more. And I think this ties into um, something that YouTuber uh, Cup of Coffee has had cited about anarchists are different from other people in the sense that they form concrete relationships with their environment rather than relationships to something abstract. 
when you spend the majority of your time um, reading and maybe discussing a few things, you're living in an abstract realm. On the other hand, um, what Jesse Sparkles is advocating is forming a relationship to your environment and your situation that is like reading. Uh, you learn to read your, your environment and, uh, and yourself in, in relation to one another. You hear a lot of people talk about the revolution or creating the revolution, uh, and it spans back for centuries. Uh, what do you think about that? It's a really funny concept. I, I understand why I used it and why it still gets so much play, but but it's almost this way of, you know, like compressing like all of our repressed desires into one idea and then conceiving of it historically as some future moment in which everything that we hate will cease and everything that we love will somehow magically and spontaneously flower. I mean, I can't even imagine that I've ever had a personal relationship that ended so neat and tidy and gave way to something that was so much more, you know, beautiful and liberating, much less <laughs> when you're talking about dealing, you know, with like just a, you know, a panoply of social forces, I mean, with a particular nation state or with the global economy. I mean, what exactly do we mean? I guess I'm more for you know, protracted notion of of social war, this idea that if you're going to be an anarchist, you're going to be spending you know the rest of your life engaging in various kinds of conflict, and the more that you can learn to enjoy that and make that sustainable, the better you know. And I think that means uh, you, know, you don't go all in on certain kinds of activities. You really pay attention to you know when it's worth you know spending your resources and in what ways. And sometimes you stay your hand, you know. I mean, sometimes you recognize this maybe isn't the smartest battle to get myself involved in, or, or if I am getting myself involved in a risky battle, to know that risk, you know. I mean, to, to really be aware of that so that you don't end up, you know, regretting something that you did, you know. You want to be able to stick around to fight for the rest of your life. And there's just, you know, I mean, an infinity of ways, I think, that are very unique to your context and yourself as an individual and, and how you're going to contest the society, you know, what's going to be effective to do that. How do you feel that anarchists can best spend their energy uh, to develop better communication and open up debate and critiques that uh, non-anarchists cannot do? We well, you know it's, it's interesting because mass demonstrations really offer this forum a lot of times to anarchists and anti-authoritarians to get together and you know just like really hang out a lot, um, develop these kinds of relationships that you wouldn't otherwise because of geographical isolation. Um, and you know, a lack of projects and just the whole inertia of the society. So I think if we could take that model you know, and more regionally like work together um, so that we wouldn't have to travel nearly as far, um, but we could keep those sort of you know, fires going um, that happen you know, in the aftermath of these protests, take what's genuine from them and learn from the mistakes of them. You know, yeah, we know that we don't always want to be traveling like, to Seattle or Miami or St. Paul or Denver, um, but what about, you know, like within like, you know, 300, 400 mile radius, you know, and what if you could be traveling in ways that, you know, themselves are subversive to the capitalist system, um, you know, for instance, hitchhiking, uh, for instance, sharing a ride, for instance, hopping a freight train, uh, there's just, you know, a variety of different ways, riding your bicycle. Um, I think it's just really important, you know, for us to be working together, to be offering that kind of criticism and, you know, getting this daily experience of, you know, helping one another out, having one another's backs, you know, creating communities that are worth defending. And I'm going to have to say that that should have much more of an insurrectionary emphasis. Um, we shouldn't delude ourselves that we can do anything other in the current circumstances than build, quote, alternatives that are pretty co-opted by capital, are pretty limited by state authority and power. Which is fine, you know, it's not our fault that that's the case, but you shouldn't say, you know, that your bike collective or your info shop or whatever, you know, like worker owns and run collective that you have going is, is totally revolutionary, you know. I mean, it's just a harbinger of things to come. It's a hint or a whisper. Um, what we need to do is fucking destroy the system. <laughs> and if we can't, then, you know, so much the worse for us. Uh, let's enjoy trying. Like, that's what I would say, you know, and that's where I feel like it would be most important to spend our energies is finding whatever ways that we can subvert and, you know, transform these types of relations. And that involves, I think, a, you know, a pretty destructive and, and critical orientation. Thank you.